world hunger, rampant poverty, global warming, and giving humans rights. All problems with a very simple solution, complete world domination. And what better way to achieve it than in Civilization VI with the power of human wave offensives, extreme authoritarianism, and melee infantry only. So at the start of the game, we do of course have to pick a civilization, and the one I'm gonna go with is the Gauls, who are essentially the very definition of Zug Zug Migo Face. So getting into the game, this is why we chose the Gauls. Because we start with a unique version of the warrior called the Geshte. These guys are essentially a slightly more expensive but better version of the warrior because they can fight against better tech units with more bonuses. They get plus 5 against anti-cav, receive plus 2 for each adjacent unit, but most importantly they get plus 10 versus units that are stronger than them. And because we are doing the ultimate brainless strategy, that is absolutely perfect. First things first though, we're just gonna found a city and it will be called I'll Audusi, God, I can't pronounce that either. As a matter of fact, I'm not even sure I'm pronouncing Geshte correctly. Gesate. Oh, even better. We have discovered a new continent, Siberia. So what we're doing is pretty simple. We can only train the worst melee units from every era. That means no ranged units, no navy, no air force, no nothing. Only the weakest, cheapest, and worst units we can possibly get. Okay, and already looking at the area that we've spawned in, I think it's just surrounded by mountain ranges. What could go wrong with us sending a faction of entirely shirtless dudes into the middle of Siberia. So what I was talking about with the Geste, the Spearmen have 25 base strength, but because Geste get another 10 plus other bonuses, we actually just have more power than them. Meaning that despite the fact that we are an objectively worse unit, we can still beat units of higher tech level. So taking out the Barbarians should give us a bonus to military tradition, which is great because we're going to be we're going to be using that a lot. And a promotion for our Barbarians, or Geste, I mean, we're pretty much the barbarians in this game let's be honest here and with the code of laws completed we can get our first combat bonuses and production bonus policies which is great and also discover a city state oh wait that's that's not a city state do i greet a fellow lover of learning no not in the slightest oh great the uh, the city state gave us a quest train an archer not like that's ever gonna happen although it is a militaristic city state which is great because that gives us more production and a whole bunch of bonuses if we can get our, our envoys high enough and there we go another city state down here and this one's a cultural one so we we literally don't care their quest is to construct a campus i'm sorry i don't know what that is miko face okay i am now realizing the tragicness of our situation and it is that we literally can only only go this way to get out of our capital. Coupling that with the fact that we cannot build a single naval unit, this is, uh, this could be rough. All right, well, unfortunately, it looks like Sweden has already formed their pantheon, which means they're gonna be on their way to getting a religion, which is very bad because I want to have the only religion. And there we go, another Civ met the Greek Empire, who is located all the ways down there. Uh, you know, us fighting against Sparta as a completely militaristic faction does not seem like a good idea. But hey, how bad can it be? All right, so the first thing we're gonna try to get is a holy site because a lot of the other factions are already getting closer to getting religions. And the reason is because we want a religion for the crusade combat bonus. Something, something, purging heretics, something, something. Jesus, look at that absolute unit just taking on the entire barbarian horde on his own. What, are you a coward to avoid bloodshed? I just killed like three barbarian camps. And then she goes right back to being super happy looking. You know what? I have one thing to say to you. You're next. All right, so here is our second city, which is founded practically on the North Pole. And come on, that's an even less pronounceable name. Honestly, I'm just gonna start calling them City 1, City 2, Future City 3. Okay, and there's something that I don't like. It looks like Sweden is actually gonna try and settle something right here. You know, it would be a shame if someone killed these almost dead warriors and yeah. captured the settler. Sweden will chastise those who threaten the world. Oh, I'm, I'm flattered. Sweden is also, oh my god, I, I feel bad for them. They're just being completely sieged. In the meantime, we get the very first holy site of, I think, the entire uh, world right now. And as you can see, the plus four adjacency bonus is absolutely nuts, which means we're going to start racking up faith really, really quickly. Okay, well, Sparta is denouncing us for declaring a surprise war. Of all the people to denounce me, you are the least credible. Okay, at this rate, we're literally just gonna walk in and take Stockholm with no resistance. I could almost take it this 
turn. And actually, it looks like I can just straight up take it this turn, which means that this should be Sweden completely obliterated. Yep, well, that was easy. I never loved power. I do. Goodbye. Sweden will not stand the test of time. Hey, plus five error score. And we get progress towards early empire. Of course, we're going to keep the city because it would make no sense not to. Oh, and even better, Sweden has another holy site, which means we are rolling in the faith right now. And we're going to be able to found our fourth city over here, uh, Elysia. See, an, an easy to pronounce name, finally. Okay, I guess, I guess Stockholm is is not particularly hard either. We also get our first governor appointment and I'm probably gonna go with Amani the diplomat because she can be assigned at one of these city states to be more envoys. And since Volan is the most militaristic, it probably makes sense that that's the one we go with. All right, awesome. We also just got our Pantheon. So now we can go and dedicate ourselves to something and more culture from our plantations is probably what we want right now. So now when we get a great profit, we can start a full religion. And right now you can see that Eastern Orthodoxy is really the only one that exists currently, which means we need to rapidly be able to contest that. Oh my god, we've only met one person so far, and I think like three or four civs have died already. I'm not sure if that bodes well or badly for us. Right, so we've just entered the classical era, which doesn't really change what we're doing all that much. It does let us make a dedication, and we're only in a normal age. We didn't get a golden age, unfortunately. So I am going to go with the exodus of the evangelicals, because we hopefully are going to be able to found our own religion relatively soon. Soon. And then, you know, bribe the great prophet to be our friend. You must make an effort at building ships. I, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm sorry. I prefer invading you. All right, nice. We got an envoy. So I believe if I send one to Wolin, yes, that makes us their suzerain. So now they are basically our puppet and we'll declare war on anybody that we declare war on. And and immediately after, I don't know how to make you happy. Well, I mean, I'm going to I'm gonna kill you anyway. I guess it doesn't matter. Man, we're really discovering all the great continents right now. First, it was Siberia and then Antarctica. All right, for a second governor, I'll probably go with financier because I think we're going to have a bunch of trade routes pretty soon. And in the meantime, we're kind of just trying to build up our military. And well, as soon as we hit a critical mass, the thing is these gaste are no upkeep. So we can just keep spamming them out and it doesn't really matter that much. I mean, besides the loss of human life, if you care about that sort of thing. I love that absolutely no one is willing to trade with us such that we can only trade within our own cities. Honestly, I can't say I'm very surprised. Aha, and our third city state boosting political philosophy which is great and Leventa is religious which is actually very good because we are almost to the point where we're going to get our first great prophet which will found our religion and later in the game we're going to be able to just use faith to straight up build all of our military units anyways all right nice so we discovered political philosophy which allows us to get our very first government and of course i'd be silly if i got anything but oligarchy i mean if you think about it oligarchy and democracy are practically the same thing minus the voting of course our first policy is going to be colonization i mean if i don't steal this land who will all right, great. So now we should have enough to, yes, recruit our very first great prophet, which is amazing. And because with the great prophet, John the Baptist, the, the Gaul. Wait, actually, was he German? All right, just read the whole Wikipedia article on John the Baptist. He's a little not German. Either way, if we use him now, that will give us the opportunity to found our religion. So down here, now we can choose our religion. The, uh, the symbol will probably be something like a scorpion. And for the name, it requires all of the class and subtlety that our civilization has. And of course, out of all of these bonuses, it only makes sense that we get work ethic along with, as I mentioned before, crusade. So combat units gain 10 combat strength when within the borders of foreign cities that follow this religion. Basically what that means is that if we convert everyone around us, we just get a permanent plus 10 combat combat bonus, which is pretty ludicrous. And now we can found the religion and make history. Zug Zug is the true path to salvation. Those other ones are scams. I mean, Eastern Orthodoxy, Catholicism, that word just sounds made up. We're also going to found our fifth city over here. And I, 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 I thought it could not get worse. I was wrong. I mean, I'm sure this is actually somewhat pronounceable, but it's not easy being this stupid. Ah, good. It seems like us settling in Siberia has done wonders. Our population is freezing to death. Yeah, maybe you should put on some shirts. The game keeps telling me to build a bunch of wonders, and against its advice, I have done nothing but build infantry. So interestingly, we could actually research ironworking and start to build swordsmen, but I'm not going to do that because Gestae are basically just better. They don't require iron, they're cheaper to produce, 
and they have no upkeep. So I am just going to build as many walls of human bodies as I physically can and just overwhelm our neighbors with them. Jesus Christ. Okay, now we get a plus four. Five holy site adjacency bonus. Don't mind if I do. Well, you know, I didn't know there was actually a volcano here. I think we lost some people in it. No, we didn't. All right. Well, this city state over here, the cultural one, has been nothing but nice to us, which is why I have surrounded it in pretty much an entire army of units. And now if I use our spread religion a whole bunch of times, now this is part of our religion, so I could just, well, declare war. And by doing so, uh, it doesn't generate any grievances because this is a silly, goofy, dumb city state. Now we can just walk in and gain ridiculous combat bonuses. You see, we're already so much better than their units. Our city state States also coming and helping in as well. That 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 poor single guy getting pelted with arrows. So as much as all these archers are swarming out of nowhere, they've got heavy chariots. We could just kind of ignore all their units, and because we beeline for the city, it doesn't matter at all. And all of their units just you know dematerialize. Of course, we're also going to keep this city and probably continue to expand down here. We are getting relatively close to the Greeks, which is nice. All right, now we research theology, so I can go ahead and get holy site adjacency bonuses which should yeah bump our holy site oh my god that's a lot of faith but to boost defensive tactics i need to be the target of a declaration of war defensive wars we don't do that here oh and now we found the ethiopian empire an honor to meet you we'd love to sample your hospitality which translates to in gaelic where is your capital and they are extremely close which is fantastic ethiopia sends you coffee bread and our war wishes well i I could send you one thing, but I don't think you're gonna like it. Oh, I just realized the big problem that we're fighting with Ethiopia over here is that their capital is really, really orthodox. That means that we're most likely not gonna get our Crusader bonus if we try to invade them. Which, I guess to be fair, doesn't matter at all. They have 40 military power, uh, and we have quadruple that. And I am doing nothing but build infantry from all of my frontal places nonstop. Aha! Now we've discovered Vatican City, which is obviously religious, and that is amazing. They have a pretty good bonus for their unique suzerain thing in terms of spreading our religion even further further, so I am probably going to try and keep them around. Maybe. Well, Ethiopia, I don't mean to say you're screwed, but, uh, I think you're pretty screwed. Oh my god, they're also being sieged by barbarians. This just gets easier and easier. Do you think that you can frighten me? Move your troops at once. Look, they're, they're just passing by, okay? And, uh, by passing by, I do, of course, mean walking all of them directly into your city. As you can see, we have so many units just scattered all around the place. I can probably hold off the Greek Empire, too, while we're fighting the Ethiopians. And again, what's important to remember is the fact that all of these units, because they're tier one, are completely free. So I'm getting no gold upkeep, no nothing, uh, and we could just keep mashing out as many of them as possible. Oh, and now we've met the Indonesian Empire. It's a bunch of missionaries that walked in. I do not think they're going to be very happy to witness the current... So okay, and, and a traitor as well. All right, and there goes the Ethiopian capital after I think about two turns of war. That was... That was pretty easy. Finally, they've denounced us. Actually, no, wait, this is the second denouncement, right? I'm sorry, it's it's hard to keep track. We're at the point where we're just one-shotting, almost one-shotting, I guess, entire groups of their units. Great, so now we have gotten into the medieval era with apprenticeship. And this is extremely important because it gives us access to man-at-arms. So man-at-arms are the improved version of Geste, and they also render Geste obsolete. That means that we can no longer build these guys, sort of. Because man at arms are about three times the cost of Geste, cost iron, and have maintenance, I don't want to build them. So I have done the liberty of queuing 80 Geste to be built. Originally, they default to man at arms, but I can just queue them all the way to the back, drain myself of strategic resources, and then it automatically lets me build Geste again. Nice, the second announcement. We're just collecting these like infinity stones at this point. You have inflicted grievances on others. Oh, don't be so modest. We'll, we'll get to you later. Oh, I just realized all of Ethiopia's units units aren't even real units. They've been levied from one of the city states they're allied to. All right, and with one last fight, this this one dude is just going to single-handedly solo everyone, I think. Wow, that was kind of impressive. Ethiopia is done. Do you think God has abandoned Ethiopia? God, that's not what we call him around these parts. Great, so now with Ethiopia dead, it seems only natural that we turn our attention to our good friend the Greeks. 
mostly because Byzantium is over here and Indonesia is over here. So we can't really get to either of the empires without going through the others. Once again, I am being denounced for avoiding bloodshed, despite the fact that I have eradicated three different civilizations. What have you done, lady? Although I am actually gonna not invade Greece right now because we have a better target, uh, the Vatican and Hattusa. It is kind of bad though that they've built walls around all their cities, but on the bright side, I, I could just choose to ignore them. Either way, let's have a go. The Opidium was no accident. I, I read that as opium at first. But the Opidium is our special version of the industrial district, which also acts as an encampment. So not only does it produce things, but it also attacks people. All right, so now the world is entering the medieval era, which means, um, you know, people are going to get mad at me for putting troops on their borders, but also allow us to get into our golden age. And of course, another exodus of the evangelicals is just what we want. We do need to keep converting. As you can see, we've, uh, we've kind of screwed ourselves over here. There's a lot of religions that we we don't like. All right, now we're at the World Congress, and this is going to give us anything good? Okay, well, plus 10 combat strength for all units of this religion. Let's just, uh, let's just choose the right one. Ah, that, that's right. I have done such horrible things that I have no diplomatic points at all. Something tells me that this is, uh, this is not going to be a very favorable World Congress. I, I take it back completely. Everybody voted for my thing. Plus 10 strength for all units of Zug Zug. Well, I could not possibly have gone better. You know what? Despite the fact that we are currently engaged in a war with these people, this seems like the perfect time to declare war on Greece as well. I mean, I've pretty much surrounded them in not only our religion, but our units. Well, I mean, I'm not sure how the Spartans are going to do in terms of warfare. I, I couldn't possibly imagine. That's a nice flex, but... I think I outnumber you like by 8,000. You know something's wrong when the Greek hoplites, the unit that they are known for in all ways, we have almost double their combat strength with our tier one basic unit. That is beautiful. The problem we're running into is that it is very, very hard to take down walls with basic units like these. I mean, we do three damage to their walls and their walls have 35 health. It is not good. I've also just been using our ludicrous amounts of faith to buy as many missionaries as possible. And we are just running them all down here to try and convert everything. Because just with all the other stuff, the conversion means plus 10 combat bonus to all of our units in the territory. I'm, I'm sorry? I just tried to convert something and then the King of Scotland just like teleported in. Oh good, there's a special session of the World Congress. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say it involves me. Military emergency. Ah! I don't know. I wouldn't call it an emergency. Let me use all my diplomatic power on this one. Boom. So how many people are going to vote for this is the real question. It failed? What? I don't think I've ever seen that before. There's like no reason for them not to vote for a crisis. Then again, I mean, am I really going to complain about this? No, I am not. All right, and there goes Olympia. We just promoted another unit over there, and Argo should be gone pretty quickly as well. And another one has been converted during the war, which means that we can hit them for a ton of damage for, you know, the following a different religion penalty. All right, well, the war has been raging on pretty significantly. I can't crack this location over here. There's just too much defense, but all of Greece is falling pretty slowly. The city-state right here is a nuisance because, again, with the walls, we can't really do anything to it. Surprisingly, Sparta does not have any walls and pretty much no other location anywhere but the city-states have walls either. All right, and there goes Argos, which is the other biggest city from Greece. All right, and there is a third conversion in a row. Everybody knows what the one true faith is at this point. All right, after a long grind, there we go. We've taken roads over. And so the last city is just Sparta. As soon as we take Sparta, we are going to be looking at 10... That is... That is a lot of Catholicism. All right, so I'm going to try and peace out with the city-state here. They have just been an absolute menace. But in terms of Athens or Greece, we should be able to take Sparta. Although there are so many Catholics coming, it is like the Grand Pilgrimage. Byzantium has sent literal armies of missionaries over here. A, no, a mega colossal volcanic eruption this time. Okay, that definitely killed someone. Oh yeah, it did. Well, I think I've been insulted in the last two turns by every faction I can even see. I shudder to think of what the ones I can't see would be saying. We're actually being completely overrun over here, but the AI is just choosing not to really attack my cities. They don't have any infantry, which makes this vastly easier. And over here, our entire every thing is just chilling. We're trying to convert everybody slowly and also solidify the rest of our... Oh, who are these people? Oh, okay. These are our allies. Ooh, heart attack. 
Another one. Now I know I'm doing something right. Oh my god, finally. It's been like 20 turns of a war against Catholicism, so we could finally convert this place. And now that it's converted, we could just gorge in on all sides with our Crusader bonus. Finally. After a bajillion turns of just throwing bodies at Sparta, we have done it. I think that is, yep, they are done. Anyways, on to the next one. The good thing about eliminating Greece is that that also pieces us out with the city-state right here. So we are finally not going to die to them. I love how every turn I still get the same notification of rainforests regrown and the number of them. It's always zero. And then every five turns, I get to see some rainforest burning down. Although on a slightly more positive note, we are forcing everyone to become Zug Zugs. There's a lot of Catholicism around here, a lot of yucky, ewy Catholicism, but we should be able to weed that out with the help of a, you know, a little Inquisition here and there. Nothing too bad besides the killing everyone. Announcement number two from the Byzantine Emperor. I'm putting these on my shelf like trophies at this point. All right, nice. So we just completed the Oracle of Delphi. I think we're also about to complete the Machu Picchu thing. I'm surprised nobody else has built these at this point. I've been waiting around for 147 turns for someone to just crank it out. Oh, is that, uh, oh no, it's just a city-state. God damn it. I'm trying to find all the other people I have to decimate by this point. So we've just researched divine right, which means we can switch our government to, uh, from, you know, somewhat democratic oligarchy, no, not democratic at all, to a completely undemocratic monarchy, which also gives us a couple more policy slots, which is fantastic. Okay, it seems like we've converted enough that the Byzantine Empire is pissed at the sheer number of bodies we are throwing into his capital in order to try and convert it. Oh, another World Congress session now, and everything is totally useless. As always, I have done such horrible things in the world that I have zero diplomatic points, so pretty much everything here is, is completely up to chance. All right, let's see if we won the dice. Okay, well, I, I guess that works. Everybody chose to make making military units with production 50% cheaper, which means that, uh... I should probably get cranking. All right, so by this point, our Gestay have also kind of outlived their usefulness. So I am going to start training man-at-arms. They're pretty much the next evolution in terms of units we can get. Unsurprisingly, they uh, they still suck against walls. I'm also going to use our Apostle over here, who I just recruited, to evangelize, which means that we can then get another belief to add to our religion. And I think I'm going to go with the pilgrimage because that's going to give us plus two faith for each city following the religion. So let's see how much it goes up. That's pretty good, especially because if we go to our city over here, we are going to inevitably be able to make a Grandmaster's Chapel, which gives us the ability to buy land units with faith. So we could just stack up faith, and instead of using money, we just recruit everybody with the power of the Zug Zug. Oh, nice. Now we can get another great person, a great scientist. I didn't even have to bribe him with any money. That's nice. Oh, and another great person, literally the very next turn, El Cid. I, I have never heard of this person in my life, but that's a pretty good combat strength bonus, so hey, I'll, I'll take it. You know, it's only dawning on me now how many more cities I have than everyone else. I have built almost no science buildings in the entire empire. Our research quite literally just consists of two cave people slamming rocks together and then dying to a volcanic explosion. And yet we are somehow still doubling the research of basically any other civilization. I think what makes the fact that I have so much military strength up here so dumb is that because all of these Yuste have no upkeep whatsoever, I am just rolling with a massive military that is totally free. Also, that's pretty cursed by victory points. Okay, another special session. I haven't invaded anyone in the last like 10 years, so this doesn't have to be about me, right? It's not about me. So apparently someone was ravaged by a natural disaster, and I mean, here's the thing, right? I don't care. I also just don't want to join this thing anyway, so we're, we're gonna we're gonna back out of that one real quick. I don't, I'm not even sure if anybody's gonna vote for helper. Well, I mean, if that was of any indication. Okay, I was literally the only person to vote no. <laughs> Guys, come on, I, I had good reason. Yeah, let's focus on that climate disaster down there for just a second. Let's ignore the fact that I have 800 combat power and I have been doing nothing but trade basic infantry for the past 30 turns. All of you are going to die. 
These walls have enough health such that there is not a chance that we break through with any less than 20 casualties of entire units. I'm also realizing now that because our faction gets access to a very cheap version of the industrial district in these opidiums, but these opidiums still produce great engineer points, in terms of great people, we make 12 great engineer points per turn, which means all the famous engineers all appear in our country. Of course, we also don't have any scientists, any writers, any artists, and any musicians but you know useless crap like that and speaking of which while everyone is busy dealing with a climate disaster you know sending aid to someone who was devastated by a flood let's just declare war on the byzantine empire as long as we don't pull in all the other factions into this war because i have a feeling that you know if, if we didn't have a lot of announcements now we're gonna get even more i mean we only know four people we have killed everyone else time to send in the boys Oh no, I didn't realize Vatican City is actually controlled by the Byzantine Empire, which means that we need to run through these guys in order to get to the rest. Well, then again, I have another like 10 units on the other side of the map too. Not to mention that all these other units are just slowly trickling down and a lot of men at arms are in here too. So, you know, real units. Although to be honest, I prefer my naked soldiers. They're, they're actually really good. Oh no, Vatican City still has warriors. I mean, we still have warriors. But now this this just feels bad. I mean, the fact that we are going to obliterate these guys. I also just realized that Vatican City is the home of Hinduism. I suppose that makes sense. Well, this is how you know you've probably screwed up the world irreversibly. We have 880 military strength of naked barbarians, and I have just started seven different wars. No need to thank me, world peace. I'm, I'm doing my part. Well, there goes our first unit. They're quite dead. I'm curious how many people we're going to lose by the end of this because I have surrounded Vatican City in missionaries so that I can convert the city, trying to convince them, hey guys, if you join our religion, I get plus 10 combat strength. Okay, see, now that we're bringing in man-at-arms, these guys are actually a little bit better at taking down the city's defenses. It's, I mean, it's not... It's not much, but it, it counts. All right, there's the first city captured all the way up here. And slow, I'm hoping that our ally just catapults down the defenses because throwing bodies is not working very well. Oh, wow. Awfully assuming of you to ask for my gunpowder uh, in exchange for basically $6. Gee, what could you want to do with gunpowder that I'm not already going to do to you? Finally, Vatican is now the rightful Zug Zug faith, which should give us, yes, even better combat stats against it, luckily. I have so many units that it takes forever to do a single turn. But even when it says enter, the game is like, well, actually, you have to still move 16 more units. Finally, gunpowder. So as much as gunpowder might seem like a ranged thing, it's not. The musketmen that we can train are actually melee units, as you can see, and they're also very good against buildings. Well, they're less bad than naked men. Oh my god, I totally forgot. So I built a building that allows us to purchase military units with faith, and Gesté are only 120 faith. We make 162 faith per turn. I could just immediately crap out 10 groups of infantry all across the map and just in mass swarm towards our enemies. Sure, they only have 20 melee strength, but you know, that means they take like two ranged attacks then die. It's a, it's a worthwhile sacrifice. Oh my god, they decided to walk their crossbowmen outside the city walls. What have you done? I'm sorry, what? Apparently a random city across the globe just willingly joined us. Wait, I see what happened. Scotland is trapped in this quarter. They have 21 military power. They've lost practically everything to one random free city that abandoned them. Oh my god, people are actually being friends with me again? What kind of bizarro world have we gotten to? I mean, I'll say yes and then declare war on them later, but still. Excellent. I mean, uh, terrible. There goes another group of our units. All right, all I have to do is attack Vatican City over and over again, taking massive damage on all of my infantry oh my god we somehow did it well that that took a lot of human lives but i would say it was pretty worth nine population okay then of course i will keep the city well with vatican city captured uh you know wake up babe it's time for another human wave offensive okay thank god everything's returning to normal more denunciations from everyone else and the fact that i still have not met any of the other factions probably says more about the fact that they don't want to meet me and then another denunciation immediately afterwards we're on the right track
Oh, and we've also just trained the very first musketmen. I, I didn't even mean to do that, to be honest. Musketmen are the basic infantry of the Renaissance era. They're actually melee units, despite the fact that they hold guns. It makes sense. You know, I feel like we really need to reform our government to be something that's a little more modern, a little more hip with the times. Wars of religion it is. Right, with all of our bonuses now, our men-at-arms are hitting almost twice as hard at pretty much everything. It's kind of insane how effective it is now to just surround them in infantry who believe really, really hard in their god and then just beat the crap out of everyone. Quite frankly, I don't even know what a Zug Zug is, but apparently these guys do. So at last we entered the Renaissance era and we are in a golden age, surprisingly wiping out like three or four civilizations will do that. And unsurprisingly, I am going to go with Ixodus of the Evangelicals again because we just need to keep converting over and over and over again because that's pretty much our way of winning things with military. I think the only World Congress session where I did not have zero diplomatic points was the first one. And I still didn't have that many. I mean, all I'm doing is just rolling dice and hoping that they don't vote for the thing that I... Oh, hey, that... I mean, those all work for me. Jesus, ally, I, I think they're dead. He's just repeatedly attacked Hacking into the city. I, I don't think there's any military targets left. Oh, oh, he just destroyed it straight up. Okay, and, that, and now there's a special session that's gonna be called. Look what you did. I mean, I did it, but still. Call your special session if you wish, but uh, nothing can unconquer Constantinople. Ba ba boom. Guys, come on. I, I mean, have I really done anything that bad? And, and it failed. This is the second time it failed. God, it's times like these that I just love the UN. You know, when I'm the one destroying the world. Well, I didn't realize that we are now officially doubling everyone else in technology. Should be pretty apparent. I've also gotten to the point where, especially with our Geste, I'm just running them at the city walls, fully aware that they are probably not going to survive. Actually, you know what? That, that's a lie. I've been doing that the whole game. Man, I hadn't even realized how much we destroyed them. He has zero military power. He has not a single military unit left. We have destroyed everything. Well, almost everything. Excellent. We've liberated another city from the oppression of democracy. Democracy. And across the way, we could just go ahead and surround this city and then hit them with pretty much the mass wave assault as per usual. Oh, finally, a volcano is erupting in someone else's land. You know, it probably says quite a bit that five of my policies are military policies, and I wish I could have six. And with one last fight, that should be it, and Byzantium is no more. Well, there's another plus five error score. On to the next one. Unfortunately, the thing that's bad about our empire, which I'm realizing, is that our people do not know how to use this thing called money. It's 1290 AD, and I don't think we have a currency. All right, and we just industrialized, which is great. So now we can start exploring exploiting coal as well as a whole bunch of other stuff. We also just built the terracotta army and that pretty much means that I believe we get a level up for every single one of our units which oh that's a that's a lot. Ah uh, it's so sad I can't boost diplomatic service because uh have an alliance with another civilization simply impossible. We got pretty lucky that we didn't discover too many civilizations at once but I'm still wondering like where is everyone? Because there's still two more civilizations somewhere. Well seeing as we just got Got out of a pretty expensive and very long war. Time to declare war again, I guess. Well, it looks like she's called my bluff in terms of standing on her border. Uh, and by bluff, I mean surprise. So of course I've started to build factories in pretty much every single province I can so we can pump out industry even faster. Something I haven't checked on for the whole game though is the world climate. How are we doing? How? Ah, look at that. It's pretty much fun. I mean, look, if I conquer the world before I destroy the world, that's a win for me. I am somewhat surprised that we're at the point where I have musketmen and they have only built walls in one of their cities. Truly one of the AI decisions of all time. All right, this is getting a little silly. It costs 480 faith to recruit musketmen. I have 3,000. I'm just mashing out as many of these units as I possibly can. And I still have something like 30 gashe that are just spread all over the map, giving me plus one amenities in all of my cities. Essentially, I don't have enough amenities anywhere, so I've solved that with military occupation. Works like a charm, to be honest. I've also just stopped converting people to our religion because I realized that, you know, when you have guns, you just don't need to. This really and 
truly does not feel very fair. Just going through and recruiting man at arms in every single one of my places because, I mean, they're practically free, besides our rapidly dwindling gold income. The other reason I'm doing this is because when I deplete all of our strategic resources such that we can't recruit musketmen and we can't recruit man at arms, it automatically makes Gishte available again. So my military power is 957 this turn. L let's see what happens next turn because it usually updates every turn. Oh my god! It went up to 1400 and most of that is just because i have recruited the worst units i possibly could and just threw them all around the place i think this is the first time that i have put units in the sea the entire game and the only thing i'm using them for is just to siege down the province over here so we are getting to the point where we only need a few more capitals to just win the game with a domination victory so there's barely anybody left there we go and indonesia is gone that was pretty much three turns of me non-stop taking every single city they had and now the only person i can see is good old robert the bruce here's the thing i genuinely don't know where the other factions are because i have gotten every everything on this entire continent all of this is ours i don't think he has much over here which means i'm probably gonna have to start going and sailing out into the sea haphazardly to try and find wherever they are and remember i can't build a navy so if they hit my guys while they're in transport i'm just gonna send more guys i've also taken over the to be the suzerain of literally every city state on the continent because i just can't be bothered to siege them i mean rest assured these these crossbowmen do not stand a chance over the fact that i can buy about seven units in a single turn but i'd rather try to get to the domination victory just in case someone slips in with some kind of religious or any other victory our expression of colonialism will define humanity's future Future. I think we've colonized everything there is to colonize. There's there's not really much. Oh wait, hey, look at that. A scone. I think Robert over here only has three cities, and this is one of them. Oh my god, he doesn't even have a religion yet. He's still a pantheon. Well, looks like the great hunt begins. I mean, it's just a question of when I'm gonna find them. I'm sending out as many units as I can. I mean, the moment we find them, I'm declaring war. Oh, that's, that's cool. It's, uh, does that look like a giant e Anyone else? Okay, we have hit land. I think somewhere over here is where the final factions are. And there is one of the last city-states, and and there is one of the last Even empires. <gasps> it's you. Mike. I knew it. My Hold arch on, nemesis is the final yeah, one. Why am I not surprised? Well, it feels like there's only one thing to do at this point to, uh, to truly make sure that there is no chance of coming back for anybody else. And I think you're already getting the idea. All right, this this feels like a pretty healthy army. Maybe this will be enough to storm the entire continent. Well, one turn in, denouncement. This guy learns quick. Your troops should not parade outside of Scotland's territory. You know, I think they should. Thank God I turned on quick combat, because this makes things way easier. How are there still four people alive here? I have no idea. They are hiding very effectively. Okay, and for whatever reason, the World Congress decided, yes, I need more strength on my unit. It's, thanks, AI. You guys, you guys know just what to do. Okay, and it seems like the other guy is Caesar. Is that it? No, I'm pretty sure there's one more group of people somewhere all around in here. I still have 1,400 military strength. I am just running through everything I possibly can right now. One turn of knowing Caesar, and I think he's known everything he wants to know about us. Excellent, excellent. This progresses us right towards the, uh, the best government form. Wait, there's another civilization? I thought we discovered literally everybody. Okay, this guy has 25 combat power. I am going to walk into his capital and he's going to die. I have one unit and I think that's enough. Yep, just like clockwork, one turn of knowing him and he wants to kill us. Or rather, he knows that I want to kill him. Not terribly surprising. It's nice that we've made the very first corpse of our entire empire in 1530 and it is of Gushte. The first circumnavigation happened because we tried to conquer the world. I guess that makes sense. So now that we've pieced out with Scotland all the ways over here, uh, it seems like the perfect time to declare a new war on the other side of the world. Of course, you know, the invasion of China is one thing, but we don't want anybody else to feel left out. So we're just going to declare war on China's neighbors, who already does not look very happy. Yeah, this is 
This is hardly a difference. Okay, every time I retake over the cities, we just lose pops and it rebels in another two turns. So you know what? You have lost your privileges to be alive. I do greatly appreciate that uh, the ruler of Mali decided to not build walls on his capital with 15 pops. Nice, nice. We're getting complimented by Julius Caesar for destabilizing the entire globe. I guess if someone was to compliment us, it would probably be him. And there goes their capital. The fact that we just hit the industrial era are about to get modern tier units or like world war ii soldiers and i don't want to take to arms because it generates less grievances than before it's just getting completely absurd the production bonuses to infantry don't even matter as well because the only infantry i'm getting are just through faith so i'm just buying everything with the power of jesus oh look a, a free bunch of line infantry were sitting in the temple okie dokie <laughs> World Congress came up, the chosen player generates 100% more grievances, and I, I just chose myself. And everybody agreed with me. I do make a pretty good argument. Alright, researching, like, actual infantry. Thank fucking god. This is gonna make my life easier, I hope. Another one gone it has cost me every last life of all the soldiers around here at this point i'm just throwing people in fully aware that the entire squad is just gonna get wiped out their city is going to collapse before their walls will because my units are just so bad but it also means that beijing is finally ours what this essentially means is that if we go to our domination victory screen we have captured seven of the capitals in the world. The only two capitals left right now are these two, which I am, I am literally about to bulldoze, or this one specifically. And the only other rival we really have in this game that we haven't touched, Julius Caesar. Wait, that's not Julius Caesar. That, that guy's name is Trion. I'm also illiterate, so you know, give, give me that. If we take his capital, we will pretty much win the game. It is somewhere in there, and I am bringing every single garbage tier unit we have to bear. I've also been recording just grinding through this for many, many hours, because as it turns out, when, uh, when you can't siege down cities with anything but crappy units, it takes a very long time to do anything. Finally, the one thing that I've been needing this whole time to win. It's about time. Well, Caesar wannabe, this is the final stretch. Insolentia ad mortem te ducet. Anulla vi Roma winky potest. All right, there is Scotland dead for the most part. Wait, did he never build walls in his city? I, I just took the whole city in one turn. Okay, it's gonna rebel in two turns. That that might be a problem. Or at least it would be a problem uh, if I wasn't going to completely obliterate it. Eight capitals captured, and the only person who still has their capital is... I'm just gonna keep calling him Caesar. There's definitely something a little poetic that the last faction to fall is the is Rome by barbarians. Seems like we've saved the world yet again. Oh, this, uh, ooh, this, this looks familiar. I mean, I've never seen this before in my life. Well, it looks like we've saved the world, uh, yet again. And all it took was the lives of a, uh, couple people. Some slight aggression and warmongering, given we declared almost every war globally. But overall, I think Earth is generally improved. This was also a pretty long one. So if you made it all the ways to the end, I see you, I recognize you, and I... Nude. Incendiary.